now rest from the labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
But Norman, as we heard from Ryan's words, was also a tinkerer. So what is a tinkerer? A person enjoys fixing and experimenting with machines and parts. And whether it was in the oil patch or in farm industry, he was driven to experiment and create things, employing innovation with machinery. He was an inventor of sorts. Now I found this out for myself when, in visiting Norman in the fall of one year, I was told of his carrot washer that I could even borrow. He converted an old washing machine, and instead of getting bent out of shape and, and washing carrots one by one over a pail, well, he transformed a washing machine that you could throw in a whole pail full, just like a, a load of laundry. Quite a genius. Now, if you love to tinker, as Norman did, well, what is your goal? Where does the urge come from? To make things better or to solve a problem. Only to feel the thrill of accomplishment if a plan works. Now, whether it be farming, engineering, medicine, or you name it. Much to our benefit, someone at some time chose to tinker, invent, or innovate what was previously done to solve a problem. We are here today because of a problem. We are here today because someone died. Norman died. Now, at first, we may not class this as a problem. He lived a good life. It's not everyone who makes it into their 90s with a sound mind. It's not as if we live forever on this side of heaven. But that's just it. We were created to live forever on this side of heaven. And there's a problem. We do face death when it wasn't a part of the plan of how God first drafted things. So, death scares us. And even if we may not be afraid of death, we may be afraid of dying. How do we tinker with death? We prolong life as long as we can. If you don't take the time to stay healthy, well, you know, you're going to have to make time to be ill. So, we exercise and we eat right, which is a good thing. Commandable to be good stewards of the life that we are given. But no matter how much care is taken, we can't escape the inevitable. And if we haven't been all that self disciplined, how do we get down on ourselves for being not careless? Death will catch up with us. And it seems so unfair, as if we are being robbed. Here we are as people able to think and feel, create and care, dream the impossible, and imagine things beyond the horizon, only to be destined to grow weak in the body, impaired in the mind, and to come to an end? It seems out of whack. And it is. You are right to conclude that death is wrong. Face it because of another problem. We are out of whack with the one who has created us. We face death because of sin. Plain and simple. And as sin entered this world through one man, so death has come to us all. <laughs> one came as a result of the other. Do we tinker with sin? We sure do. In any way we can from seeing it as a problem. We can make ourselves feel good about what God says is bad. We alter what we've done so that it doesn't look all that wrong. If I didn't lash out in my anger, I was just making sure that I was being heard. That second look, it wasn't lust. No, I just appreciate the opposite text. I, I was not being stubborn. 
I'm just quite firm with what I believe to be right. But are we right? We can tinker with sin, which tells the stories which either makes us out to be the hero or the victim. And either way, we tinker with reality so that we don't implicate ourselves. I'm not at fault. Was the other guy? We then tinker with sin to be self-sufficient when God created us to live in humble dependency. Independent and autonomous, or so we think, we don't need to rely upon God. But then again, what happens when we face the trouble that evaporates our self-reliance? Throwing a pandemic, throwing a war, look what happens. Because ultimately, death catches up to us. And that means no bounds of tinkering on our part can save us from the consequences of it, death. And even as we hear from the Holy Writer to the Hebrews, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give account. So, we have a problem. A problem we can't fix. Problem Norman could not fix. He could convert an old washing machine to wash away the dirt from the carrot, but he couldn't do anything to wash away his own sin. And that's why he leaned upon the Savior. And that is why he goes before us as a strong witness. Those are left behind. And that is how a Savior is also here for you. Because God did some tinkering. When the time had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons, daughters, children of God. Jesus was born to us as God incarnate. He lived perfectly in obedience to the moral law that we have not kept to redeem us, to pay the price that would fix the problem. God made him, who had no sin, to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. See, that is what took Jesus to the cross. The problem is fixed in how we are made right before God. When trusting in Jesus for our salvation, when baptized into his, his death and also into his resurrection, Father God looks on us and says, problem solved. So if Jesus' sacrifice washed your sin away, then working backwards, you have life? Absolutely. As Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. You have the life. Jesus won it for you and rises from the dead. The good shepherd laid down his life for his sheep. The thrill of what he accomplished for you and for me. Yes, I know. We know. The carnal side of flesh we still carry around is still bound by its weakness. Until Jesus returns to this, when we will follow the same steps that Norman walked, and for whatever is in store for each of us, but for every step, we have the promise of how God comes to us. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Jesus is here to give you rest to wherever you are weary to where you still face life's problems. Jesus traveled both the valley of the shadow of death. He's then so ready, so willing, so present to enter the shadows of your hurt, your sadness, your grief, to fix you. God tinkers with you. You are his workmanship. Like following blueprints upon his drafting table, you were created in Christ.
Christ Jesus to do good works to solve problems. You're the tool in his hands. Fashion to not only receive his grace and mercy, but also to share it with others. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that we are your workmanship. You tinker with us. You shape us. You transform us to be the tool that is within your hand. As you were there, you shaped Norman to be the tool within your hand. We thank you for his life. We thank you, Lord, for his goodness. And we pray that you would be with us now. To grant us the life we need know that you come to all of our problems to fix us and to remind us of how much you love us. In your name we pray. Amen.
resurrection and life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now we let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, who gather the lambs of your flock in his arms of your mercy, and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life, and a joyful reunion with those we love, who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Prior to us singing the closing hymn, just a couple of announcements, a reception will take place immediately after the service in the church of basement. After which, at a certain time, uh, we'll make an announcement in the church basement to when we'll be going to St. Peter's Cemetery for the tournament. As we will soon be enjoying uh, all that has been made available to us and for us, let us join in a short word of grace. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you pour down upon us in the life that you have given. We thank you, Lord, for the food that has been prepared and for the hands that have prepared it. And we pray, Lord, that you bless our time, a fellowship to gather together to support our Lebowski family as we mourn the death of the Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. We join the singing.